Came out here uh, from Florida and started a prop company out of my garage. And from there, I was here for probably two and a half years. And then I started HGI with Ian Hunter and Shannon Gans. Yeah, pretty insane. Uh, and um, um, I would say uh, young defiance and uh, um, ignorance would be, would be really what it was. Um, but I would say that first, first official job with uh, what would, it then was Hunter Grasser Industries was probably Broken Arrow. And uh, I would say that in terms of like a big, big miniature show. I'm at this company, VIFX, and while I'm at VIFX, um, drawing boards for this one director, um, a different show at VIFX needed boards drawn for a different movie. And so they said, well, um, we know this guy does storyboards for visual effects. Maybe he could draw some boards for your show to fix this one scene. And what happened was there was a show called Broken Arrow, which was a John Woo movie, and they were doing some effects work for it, and there was this one particular sequence that wasn't quite working, and they just needed to sort of um, gin up the scene, if you will, you know, spice it up, uh, boost the, the visuals of it. And uh, it was involving a pair of nuclear bombs being loaded and dropped from a, uh, a B-3 bomber, they called it. It was a pretty fairly important plot point. The whole movie revolves around these atomic bombs that go missing. The term broken arrow applies to that. So I drew some boards and uh, turned them in, met with the producer, and then she said, well, you know, since you could do the boards, what about, you know, can you fix this scene for us? And we're going to reshoot it, but the models, you know, we need them, we need them uh, made to fit your boards. So I said, well, I can take on the job. I can, I can build these models for you. Uh, sure enough. And when do you need them? A few weeks? Yeah, no problem. So then, door closes. I walk out and I think, oh my God, I've got no place to work. I don't have a base anymore. I, you know, uh, have a garage, a single car garage in North Hollywood. Uh, how am I going to do this work? So I realized I better, like, call in some, you know, some uh, favors, if you will, and approach some of my associates and see if they can help me out. So having this job in hand, no place to work, I approached Matthew and said, listen, um, I'll bring this job here if, um, if I can, you know, hire your shop to do the work. And uh, it was based on that one job that we sort of decided to uh, form Hunter Gratzner. So it was originally a low-tech job, and then by the time that it came in the door and went out the door, uh, we had become Hunter Gratzner. We got a call. I needed somebody to build a motion control model of this um, B-3 fictional stealth bomber for the movie. Now, it was for a trailer because Hunter Gratzner had been working on the movie, and they had built uh, like a huge pyro crash destruction model. And I think they had built a small model for some some distant shots or something like that. But we, we needed something a little bit bigger. We were contracted to build an eight foot wingspan uh, model of the B3. And we had three weeks to do it. And um, a model like this um, to build in three weeks is kind of challenging um, because uh, you basically have, the way it kind of breaks down, you end up like having like a week to get the pattern done and the armatures and all the interior stuff. And then a week to you know, kind of do the molds and pull the parts and then a week to clean them up. It's not really quite enough time. So we thought about it and we thought, well, wh how can we do this? There's got to be a way. What we did was we, we used uh, urethane foam. We, we uh, engaged a sculptor, a guy named Steve Penny, who, who was able to sculpt the thing freehand. He was a brilliant guy out of foam. Then we had the big studio vacuum form a shell of styrene on top of that of each of the pieces. So now we had four pieces of vacuform that were the right shape and all that stuff. And then meanwhile, John was welding up a, a steel armature for the interior in our brand new shop. I mean, we literally had just moved in. We moved into this place and we started working. Anyway, we put the thing together. Once we got it all assembled, then it was really just a detail job and it just became a, a project of scribing in all the panel lines, which are supposed to be kind of almost invisible anyway, because it's a stealth bomber. And then uh, a paint job, which we brought in Bruce McRae 
to do. He did a beautiful job on the on the plane. It was a gorgeous paint job. And then just tons of pinstriping and all the things, you know, that you do. The model turned out great and we got it done in three weeks. Then we got a call from Susan Sorman, who was the visual effects producer on the film, and she was looking for to use our model for shots in the movie that they had decided they needed. And and we actually still had the model. We had it on display. So we said, well, okay. And one of the things they were going to do for one of their motion control passes was they were going to paint the bottom of our plane um, white for some reflection or something like this they were going to do with it. And we were like, eh, okay, but uh, you got to repaint it. I mean, we, we, you know, we, we don't want it to be, you know, we have this beautiful paint job that Bruce McRae did on the plane. And they said, no, 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 we'll have our painter repainted. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Um, it it's going to be, be fine. And we were like, yeah, but I don't know. I mean, who exactly? Because we felt, you know, kind of like, you know, Bruce is one of the best painters in the business. Like what, what you know, we don't really want to just have anybody paint this thing with a can of spray paint or something. And then we kept pushing and pushing and finally they were like, okay, okay, we're going to have Ron Gress repainted. Is that okay with you? <laughs> we're like, sure. Ron Gress who painted the Starship Enterprise. <laughs> yeah, I think, we, I think Ron could paint the could paint our, our model. That'd be fine. So the, the model ultimately had a, a Bruce McRae paint job on top and a Ron Gress paint job on the bottom. <laughs> which is pretty funny. It was in our lobby for a long time and then and then ultimately we sold it into a collector and it's still making the rounds now, which is crazy. Um, uh, amazing to see it out there in the world. But anyway, that was a fun little project and it got us going and that was our first uh, project division crew was really, was, you know, Broken Arrow, which was, which was great. 